First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 to verse 18. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Hallelujah. I'm Prophet Ezekiel Melchizedek. I come your way with the words of comfort while we are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ. Stay tuned. Hallelujah. The world. Praise God. The world. What I did on the cross. Go and tell the whole world. Is born again. So, 
He has come out of the world, and now he has come to live his life in Christ. So in Christ, everything is new. When you are in the world, you behave like the wealthy person. You behave more or less like the devil, because the devil controls the world. But what once you give your life to Jesus, your life comes into the land light of Christ. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 makes us to understand that if any man or any woman or any person is in Christ, he is a new creation. Another person says a new creation. So in creation is a lifestyle, that means you have a new life to live. And he does it clear here, he said all things are passed away. So your lifestyle is a renewed life. You don't live your life according to the way you were living before, you got born again. No. Because the new life is passing after Christ. So the old life, which is the sinful life, the life before you discover Christ and the Word of God. The Bible tells us that that life must and should pass away. Give it away to a new life. Hallelujah. So he said, Behold, all things have become new. That is where the new life starts. Remember, we are talking about the new life. So, when I get born again, my old life is crucified with Christ. And that, of course, is the life of sin, the life of evil, the kind of life that makes me commit adultery, lie, fornication, steal. That kind of life has to give way so the new life can take over. Hallelujah. Now we're going to Galatians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yes, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. He said, I am crucified with Christ. So, you need to understand that when you get born again, you become a partaker of the crucifixion of Christ. That means the way Christ was crucified, the same way your old life, your sinful life is crucified. The same way your weakness is also crucified. In the same way your sinfulness is also crucified. Give way to a new life, to a new person in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the Bible says, we are crucified with Christ. When Christ was hung on that cross, that was where you are also crucified there. That was where your sinful nature, your love, your stealing habit, your fornication habit, that was where all your adulterous life, your prostitution, your unholy, that was where he was crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. So, the Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. That means, it's not the old person. It's not the old man. It's not the old woman. It's not the old personality. It's not the old character. It's not the old It's changed, transformed. So, you live the kind of life 
that God wants you to be. Praise God. So he says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yes, not I. That is why it's a new life. The new life is no more you. The new life is not going to be controlled by your passion, your desires, the things you wish to do, the things you want to do, the places you want to go, your feelings, your lust, your bad acting, your weakness. The new life is not about your addiction. No. The new life is the life of a person. He says, Nevertheless, I live. Yes, not I. It's not really me. That's what I'm trying to say. But Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. So the new life is all about Christ living inside you. That makes a great difference. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why. You can never relate to your past, to your history. No, you are a new creation. You are a new creation. You are a new person. You are a new species. See, this new person never existed in your history. You never used to be like this. Because the new life is not your life. It is the life of Christ. So it's all about you. But it's about Christ. The new life leads to glorify Christ. Amen. The new life leads to honor Christ. The new life leads to praise Him, to adore Him. Hallelujah. Amen. So, in this new life, we live for the glory of our Lord Jesus. We live the lifestyle of Jesus. We do the things that Jesus will do. We say things that Jesus will say. We behave in a way and man as Christ will behave. That, in essence, is the new life. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Galatians chapter 2. He says, verse 20. The B. He says, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So the new life, you live in the flesh, but you live a life of faith. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So the old life used the flesh, but your old life was not by faith. You are living by your pens, your, 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 your perceptions, your sensory perceptions. You live by the things you see. You live by the things you feel. You live by the things you hear. You live by your desires. You live by your lust. You live by your pride. That means the old life. You live by the influence of friends and relatives. You live by the influence of the things you see and hear and feel. That is the new life, the old life. The old life was controlled by the passions and the affections of the world. But this new life is a life of faith. Amen. I live by faith. Hallelujah. That is our new life. We live by faith. We move by faith. We do the things we do by faith. We overcome temptations by faith. We overcome sin by faith. We overcome evil by faith. That is the new life. The God kind of life. The life that God himself has chosen for us to live. Is the new life. Amen. Amen. So, if you want to live this kind of life, this new life, then you must live by faith. So, Jesus, He loved me, He loved you, and He gave Himself for you so that 
It's you who will live a new life. That's the reason Christ died. He died so that our own life will die with him. Then he rose again so that a new life will be given to us. Amen. Praise God. So the new life is a life that shows grace is at work in you. Amen. Amen. Verse 21, that is says, verse 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Hallelujah. Amen. So, he's trying to say that if you are trying to live by the rudiments and the principles of the law, you are frustrating God's grace. A person who lives by the rudiments or the principles of the law, the law books, that person is frustrating the grace of God. That means the grace of God cannot work in your life. But when you live by faith, in Jesus, then you will have grace. He says, "From well, if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So righteousness couldn't come by the law. The law could not establish righteousness. People spoke when the law says, Thou shalt not steal. People spoke lies when the law says, Thou shalt not lie. People committed adultery when the law has said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. So, the law could not bring righteousness. Instead, the law brought sinfulness. That's why Jesus came to die. My name is Prophet Isaac Minister of the Salvation Christian Church, also known as the Yeshua Address Minister. You are here, opportunity to invite you to watch working in business. And every Wednesday morning is 9 a.m. to noon. Operation Saint Mark's Service. And then moving in the morning is the beginning night. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Hello, precious one. You're watching the Yeshua Artist Broadcast. God bless you for watching. We are spreading the gospel to the nations. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. The Bible says, This gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness against the nations before the end of the world shall come. Yes, now we want to invite you to support the work of God, sponsor the work of God, be a partner in this broadcast. You can send your tithes, your seeds, your offerings, oh yes, your partnership offerings, and the Lord will bless you. Look at the numbers shown in the screen. You can call the telephone numbers. You can also look at our banking details. I believe that God is going to bless your life. Now, you know to know that the gospel is a fertile soil where you can sow your seed. So God will give you a harvest of righteousness. When you give, the Bible says, you shall come back to you with measure press down. Shaking together, right over, shall be given up to your boss. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And I want you to understand that God has a package of blessings for you as you sponsor this broadcast. God bless you. Hallelujah. In the process, when he rises from the dead, he will give us a new life. Amen. That's the kind of life a Christian shall live. Amen. We have been given a new life. But the question is, do we live that new life? Do we walk? New life. It is important. Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 6. The book of Romans, chapter 6. Now, we're going to 
read the Bible from verse 1, Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So God is asking us a question here because there are some people who are trying to frustrate the grace of God. They are trying to be opportunists. They think we are grace. So we are saved by grace and by our deeds and our acts. Then they continue to live in sin. You should know that sin is the life of the old man, the old person. Sin is the life of the sinner. Jesus came to save us so that he will make a saint out of us. That is the new life. The new life is a saintly life. Is the life of the saints. You know, the Bible tells us that the name Jesus means say Yeshua means that the Hebrew for Jesus, Yeshua. It means a God who saves or a God who is our salvation. So Jesus gave you the from sin. In fact, you should know that sin is a slave master. So a simple life is slavery. That's what God says. In John chapter 8, Jesus made it clear. He says, very, very, I say unto you, he that committed sin is a slave to sin. John 8, verse 34. So, when you live in you are slave, you need to be saved. The life of slavery is not a freedom life. That means you don't do the things you want. You don't do the things you choose. A slave has no decision power. A slave has no real power. A slave lives under the dictates of the master. So when you are slave, you are not your own. You don't control yourself. Your life is dictated and controlled by some. And what is more, a slave doesn't have a right. So you can't speak for yourself, you can't defend yourself, you can't choose for yourself. There is no legality in your life. You don't have legal rights, you cannot contest for anything that belongs to you. Your master can choose to pay you or not, he can choose to feed you or not. You can say, why? Yeah.
praise the Lord. You're welcome back. I believe that message was a timely message. God spoke to you in the car of your hand. It may not be speaking to you in this way. I want to tell you there is a time for decision. Decision is the greatest power that God gave you. It is time for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. It's not a big deal now. You want to give your life to Jesus, just pray this way after me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for saving me. I receive you into my life. Forgive my sins and wash away my sins with the blood of Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just pray that prayer, I want you to understand that you are born again. Not a living principle as a born again child of God. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. The Bible says, If anyone is in Christ a new creation, behold, all things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. So now it is time for me to pray and speak into your destiny. I want you to touch my palm with your finger like this on the screen right now. Whatever you are believing God for, just have join your faith with mine as we pray. God is going to touch your life. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for this precious soul. That your grace, your power, your glory, your anointing will visit them. Be their redeemer, be their deliverer, be their savior. Make a way where there seems to be no way. Open doors that the enemy is closed. Business doors open, financial doors open, marital doors open. Doors of opportunities. May the Lord heal your bones and deliver you from every demonic affliction and suppression. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for touching your children. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that God has touched your life and changed your destiny. And I believe that you like to worship with us. You can worship. Hallelujah. Psalm 122. You are here. The Bible says, I was glad. Moving in on me. My name is Prophet Ezekiel. I worship you. I'm the minister of the Salvation Christian Church. I worship you. Also known as the Yeshua Artist Minister. You are here. I want to take this opportunity to invite you to worship. Working in this. Every Sunday, 9 a.m. till noon. I worship you. And every Wednesday morning is 9 a.m. I worship is you. Operation Save You are here. Service. And then Moving in on me. And then I'm going to pray for the night of prophecy healing and deliverance. I worship you. I'm going to pray for the night of prophecy healing and You are here. Let's see, see what you're up on. Working in this place. I worship you, I worship 